In today's tutorial we're going to make a six petal flower out of cotton yarn and let's get started right after this. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do these flowers that appear on flip flops. You can use these flowers for anything including the flip flops, reefs, hats and etc. But I got a surprise behind the paper. Let me move it. So this is the exact same pattern and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to do the ones that are exactly on the flip flops and then I'm going to show you an alternative round that you can add to at the end to give it a bit of depth and a bit of layers. I love when things are traced around with white and it's just one of my go-tos. So you can change the whole look of the concept of going from what appears to be on the flip flops to adding a whole nother level with adding a layer of white. So let's uh, start diving into this pattern more. So today we're going to be working on this pattern. It's not very complicated. You're going to need two colors if you wish. They have opposite colors that you see on each side of the flip flop. Again that's your own creativity. I won't be using white in today's tutorial because you won't see anything. It's like a white out so I'm gonna have some fun with some colors that I'm gonna do today. So let's get started and grab your four millimeter size G crochet hook today and today we're also going to be using uh, Lily Sugar and Cream and or Bernat Cotton Yarn. One of the two is good. They're both cotton yarns. You're gonna want it for this kind of application. It will hold its shape even better and again you can just find this in a retailer near you. So let's start today's tutorial. We're going to create a slip knot to begin and it has to have us chain two. So we're just gonna put this in the, in the um, crochet hook. Remember that the first loop never counts as one. It's a slip knot. So we're gonna chain and we're gonna chain two. So one and two and what we will need to do for round number one is that we come into the starting chain that we started with and we're going to put six single crochets around there and then join it. So just go into the very starting chain and pull through and, and pull through two. That's a single crochet. We want to do that six times. So that was one and two going in again. So you're gonna want this straggler just leave it down on top so you get it stuck underneath. There's three going back in for four Going back in for five, back in for six and throw that straggler in behind. So now you have to join it to the beginning one. The easiest way to find it is count back from the hook. So count back. So one, two, three, four, five and six and sometimes it's not always obvious which one is the sixth one. So that's just a, a cute little tip in order to help you. So let's just uh, insert and we're gonna uh, pull through and through to create a, um, a slip stitch in order to bring it to a full conclusion. Let's move along to round number two. In round number two we're gonna start off with the chain one and in the same one that you've attached or with the slip stitch you need to put in two single crochets into that same stitch right underneath it. So every stitch all the way around there's gonna be two single crochets into each. So you're making the circle bigger. Okay so every one is going all the way around. So what's gonna happen on this one here you'll see in the instructions it says at the end 12 SE. That means 12 single crochets. So we're gone from six in the last round and because we're putting two into each there will be a total of 12. I wanna show you where to stop on this because most people when they're doing these kind of crochet projects they don't stop on time. So I want you to count. So one set of two, two, three, four, five and six. So everybody always thinks this last one here is a stitch but it's not. It's an extension of the first one. So you just have to insert your hook into the very first single crochet and pull it through and through as a slip stitch and see it brings it to conclusion. So a lot of people add an extra stitch there therefore the counts will be completely wrong. We're now gonna finish this color here and we're going to add in another color that we want and we're just gonna trim our yarn about, about eight inches and I wanna just pull it through the loop and I wanna pull it through these stitches. So just pull it through and we, this is called weaving in the ends. So I'm just using the hook and I'm just going underneath the stitches and then I'm weaving it and I'm doing about four or five of these stitches. Once I'm satisfied with that I'm going to then just cut it and so therefore you'll never see it. Okay so this is the front end so I want the weave done coming out the back end side so I can now cut it and the starting one that we had I'm gonna cut that out too. So now this is my my middle here. This is rounds one and two. Let's move along. We're gonna start doing the petals. The petals do not take very long at all. So let's begin to do the petals. So the petals are made up of doing each petal individually and then we come back 
and so we do one and then we come back and do another. So we actually have to fasten off every time we finish a petal. So there are 12 stitches in here. There are six petals. So therefore each petal absorbs two stitches out of the 12. So let's begin. We're gonna start off and we're gonna do to the front loop only. Okay and we're gonna slip stitch. So there in crochet there's always two strands that are considered one stitch. If you go into the first one it's considered the front loop and if you go into the back one it's the back loop. What they're asking you to do is go into the front loop only and we're going to attach on our yarn with the slip stitch just like this. We're going to chain one and we're gonna put two single crochets into that same stitch. Okay so just coming in. So one and two and then we go immediately to the next one front loop only and we're gonna put two single crochets. Noticing that I'm putting this straggler down on, on it so that the straggler is caught in between. So this is what we have to do. We have to turn our work and for the next three rows we just have to do one single crochet into each of the single crochets as we build it higher. So we're gonna chain up one okay and going into the same stitch right underneath. So we're gonna uh, single crochet across. So one, two, three, and four. So that was row one of three. Okay, we turn our work. So we chain up one and one single crochet in each. So one, two, three, and four. And then finally we turn our work again, chain one, one single crochet in each. This is the third time and now we're ready to bring this project to conclusion for this particular petal. So we go to our fourth, we turn our work. So to do the last one we have to chain up one and we draw up a loop of each of the next two stitches and then bring them together. So we're gonna come into the first one, draw up a loop and pull up and then we're gonna go into the next one, draw up a loop and pull up. You have three loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through all two and then do the same thing for the next two stitches. So in, pull through, go into the next one, pull through. Whoops, my apologies for that. In the next one, pull through and then you have three loops on the hook, pull through all of those and now this is good to go. So now you're done. So we're gonna just trim off this now. We're gonna keep a little bit of an extra long tail here and you're gonna pull through the loop like this and using your darning needle you're going to wanna hide this into position underneath so that it never comes out on you. Okay, so I'm grabbing my darning needle now and I'm putting my yarn through it and all I just wanna do is drag this yarn tail three times back and forth. So just going underneath the stitches, pulling it, pushing it through. So there's one in a different pathway but going in the other direction for two a different pathway means it's a different set of fibers so it doesn't fall out on you and finally going back in the third direction for three like this. So that's done. Now you can safely cut that out there and because you were bearing in the first, first one underneath the stitches you can physically cut that one out as well. So there's one petal out of six. I'm gonna review doing this one more time. Okay just for kicks I'm gonna use a different color for my next petal. It's the same thing that we've just gone through. We're just gonna do it one more time. So let's begin and we're gonna put our hook in and we're gonna go to the next stitches that are available. Remember it's a front loop only. So just attach it and pull through, chain one and you're gonna do two single crochets into that same stitch. So one and two and then you're gonna go to the next stitch, front loop only and, and making sure that this captures underneath and there's gonna be two into that one. So for the next three rows we're gonna just turn our work. So just chain up one so and we're gonna single crochet ourselves across. So one, two, three and four. So that was one of three turn our work, chain one, go into them again. So this is the second crossing. There's only four across. Turn our work, chain one and come again. This is the third time. One, two, three and four and finally the very last time 
we just have to then bring it to conclusion. So we chain up one and we yarn over, pull through the loop going into the next one, pull it through, pull through all three loops. So that's two together and do it one more time in the next two and pull it together. And then I'm just gonna trim off my work, use my darning needle and then hide in my loose ends, hide in the loose end and then move on to the next petal. So when I come back I'm gonna just uh, do this off camera. Um, you've seen how I do it. It's that easy to do. Making sure to go back and forth three times. So right underneath the stitches So one, going back and through a different path, two, coming back again for three. And then I can safely trim that out right to the base and I can trim off the other one. And that would be petal number two. So keep moving on and we'll see you back when we have all this completely done. So here's what my flower will look like in the end. You will notice that because if you've done this single, uh, because it's actually bigger than what the stitches will allow, it will want to uh, settle into each other. So one kind of goes under the other, the other one kind of goes over top of the other. It's kind of like a pinwheel that's going on in this particular pattern. So this is a really kind of a neat idea and if you're looking to make anything like this, this is a really great pattern. But I'm gonna take you one step further. So this is the pattern. Let me show you what else you could do with this. It's kind of cool. I'm a really big fan in outlining things. It's just one of my go-to's. And so you've used single crochet in every petal going all the way around. So I like the idea of actually um, framing this with single crochet. So I'm gonna use a white. I know I shouldn't be using white on this. But every one of the single crochets, if you were to do it, it's single crochet, single crochet. Every row equals a single crochet. And at the top then would be um, two single crochets because it was two together at the top. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm just gonna trace the outside of each of these petals with white. Now I'm not gonna fasten off every time I do a petal. I'm just gonna continue to go all the way around. So I'm just fastening on now, chaining one and I'm going to single crochet myself all the way around each one of the petal, uh, petals. So I just move up to the next row. See I'm just moving up and I'm keeping down my straggler down there so that it gets stuck and I'm just gonna move myself around these petals using white. If you would like a more roughly looking idea you could do a chain one in between each one of these and then that'll make it kind of rough looking like more roughly and I'm just kind of just placing my stitches as I go and this will be a really kind of a neat idea so I'm gonna get all the way around one petal Now if you are going too tight it's gonna buckle in like it's kinda here but again I'm just gonna just play with it later. And then I'm gonna go right into the very last one right underneath and then I'm gonna start the next petal. So just coming right I'm gonna start in the next one that's right underneath and then I'm gonna move up. And the reason why I went all the way down instead of jumping right to the next petal is that these want to kind of sit in Side each other like how they're resting. So if you go to the next petal that's gonna interrupt that flow. So you just wanna go right down to the base and then restart once again. Okay so I'm just gonna move up the side and if you put in an extra stitch here and there you know what who's, who's really gonna matter right. So I'm just gonna continue to go and so now you'll see that it will kinda just wanna sit into each other just like this. So continue to do that if you would like to do this and I'll see you at the end of this and you can see what you think of this concept. Um, I just thought about it. I haven't actually done it so I'm doing it live here on camera with you um, to see what I'm gonna think of it and I think it's kind of a neat idea. So try that and I'll see you back here in just a moment and you can judge whether this is for you or not. And remember when you get all the way down go right to the base go to the next base of the next one. So right to where the other petal is sitting into and then start going up that next petal. And I'll see you here in just a moment. So as you get all the way back around I'm just in the base of the next one and I just want to just join it with the slip stitch and then I'm gonna use a darning needle to hide that in. This. So I'm just gonna pull it through. So I kinda like when I outline things it just is my thing. 
may not be for you and of course you can outline it with anything else black or whatever colors that you wish if you would like to do this. Again this is not part of the pattern this is just me uh, just using creativity and just going a little extra. Sometimes uh, in crochet it's always that little bit of extra which gets more likes and more appreciation. So sometimes if you just go that little extra step it'd be amazing. You could do like reefs with this kind of idea too. It's very kind of spring like. I like the whole color combination. I just kind of just did what I wanted and now that it's in back and forth three times I can get rid of the original string that I buried in as I went and then all I just gotta do and again I'm doing this live on camera. I haven't done a prototype of this. So all I'm just gonna do now is just kind of stretch things out and whatever and just get everything nice and going. Just like so. Just kind of repositioning things just like this. And that would be how I would do a flower like this. So if you're interested in this kind of look um, it's uh, clearly available to you. You just gotta trace the outside with some white and you're good to go. Till next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Have a great day. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.